Right friends, welcome back to Q&A discussion, look at the first one. National Sports Development Fund is quite often in the news and look at the following sentences. Few things I would like to tell you, this National Sports Development Fund, it was established under Charitable Endowments Act in 1998. Second thing is, it is managed by the council constituted by the central government and here who is the chairperson? The chairperson is Union Minister for Youth Affairs and Sports and this is a Charitable Endowments Act, this was registered under Charitable Endowments Act. Then one more important point is, it mobilizes resources from the government as well as non-governmental organizations also. It takes money or you can say it mobilizes resources from government, non-government as well as individuals also. And what is its purpose? It provides a support for promotion of specific sports disciplines and at the same time improving performance of the Indian sports in the major international events. So, this is established to administer and apply the monies of the fund for promotion of sports in general. So, all four correct. So, if you want more about National Sports Development Fund, I have listed here, please go through this. It is established under Charitable Endowments Act, resources from government as well as NGOs. Council is constituted by central government. The council is headed by at present Union Minister for Youth Affairs and Sports. So, members also include representatives of the apex industry institutions like FIKI, CII, SOCHAM, etc. Look at the next one. Technical Education Quality Improvement Program, TEQIP. This is in the news and look at the following sentences. This is implemented as a central sector scheme. Please do not forget this TEQIP is to improve the quality of education or you can say increasing the quality and equity in participating engineering education institutions and improving the efficiency of engineering education. This TEQIP is intended and here 50 percent of the credit is given by IDA, these things do not forget and this TEQIP3 is meant for not for southern states of the country, it is meant for seven low income states as well as northeastern part as well as hilly states. So, for developing the technical education in the northeastern states as well as the hilly states as well as low income states, this is intended. So, this is wrong, this is correct. So, TEQIP phase 3 was finalized, sorry, this program 3 was finalized. Under program 3, government is getting 50 percent credit from IDA. So, these things please do not forget. And Kamuti solar power plant is in the news. If you look at Tamil Nadu, 3, 4 things do not forget from examination perspective. Recently, oil spill that is the Kamarajar port, that is Ennore port, you can say near Chennai. Second one is Kudankulam in South Tamil Nadu, that is atomic power plant built with Russian assistance. Third important point is with regard to neutrino observatory. Neutrino observatory is coming up in Thani district of Tamil Nadu and it is into some environmental clearance problems, that is different story. And these things please do not forget when you look at the Tamil Nadu and this Kamuthi solar power plant is in the news. It is situated in Tamil Nadu, Kamuthi solar power plant. This is considered to be a single location world's largest power plant, but Andhra Pradesh in Karnul district of Andhra Pradesh at a place called Varvakal, one solar power plant is coming up that is going to overtake this Kamuthi solar power plant as the world's largest single location solar power plant. So, if someone talks about Kamuthi solar power plant, Tamil Nadu, at the same time Andhra Pradesh Orvakal that is in Karnul district of Andhra Pradesh that is going to become the world's largest single location solar power plant, right. So, this is the location of Kamuthi, then let us go ahead with regard to public debt management cell you should have clear idea about public debt management cell. So far, the public debt is managed by Reserve Bank of India, but 
Reserve Bank of India is not only the banker, but also looks at the borrowings of the government. So, this is making conflict of interest. Conflict of interest means this RBI is the banker at the same time, it is associated with the borrowing of the government. So, this is creating conflict of interest. So, under the circumstances, government decided to take out the functions of this borrowing from Reserve Bank of India with that purpose, public debt management agency is to be instituted, but as interim measure, this public debt management cell is proposed and after two years or maybe within two years, public debt management agency will be established. Look at the following sentences, this public set debt management cell this is to be set up by the finance ministry, I think it is already set up under the finance ministry as a wing of department of economic affairs as an interim arrangement absolutely correct. So, if someone talks about public debt management cell, it is set up by finance ministry as a wing of department of economic affairs as an interim arrangement. Ultimately, what happens? This public debt management agency will be established maybe within two years as a statutory authority to look at the government's borrowings. And at present, PDMC, which was established under finance ministry, will only have advisory jurisdiction because so as to avoid any conflict of interest with the statutory functions of RBI at present the statutory functions of borrower are vested with RBI. That means, the borrowing functions of the government are to be looked after by RBI. That is a statutory provision. So, as to avoid any conflict of interest or to in order to avoid anything to go against statutory provisions, this PDMC will act as only advisory role within one or two years, PDMA will be established as a statutory authority, right. So, I have given these sentences only to make you clarify about all these things. You see public debt management cell, it will be with the Ministry of Finance, it will deepen the bond markets in the country. I am talking about once PDMA is established, it will deepen the bond markets in the country and it is one of the pending financial sector reforms as an interim measure PDMC is established and in future PDMA will be established. So, all the things I have given here you can go through it. To give thrust to agriculture sector, union government took several steps during this year's budget and look at the following sentences. Coverage under the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, its coverage last year 2016-17 was 30 percent, it covered 30 percent of the cropped area and its coverage is to be increased to 40 percent during 17-18, that is one important decision. Second one is mini labs will be established at Krishi Vignan Kendras, Krishi Vignan Kendras mini laboratories will be established to test the soil samples, because government is giving soil health cards. So, as to test the soil samples of the agricultural fields, mini labs will be established at the Krishi Vignan Kendras and this facilitates measurement of nutrient levels in the soil. Then third thing is a micro irrigation fund with a corpus of 5000 crores will be set up. Micro irrigation fund to look at micro irrigation, maybe sprinkler irrigation or drip irrigation, these are examples of micro irrigation. So, to look at micro irrigation requirements, this micro irrigation fund will be set up with a corpus of rupees 5000 crore, and at the same time, the corpus of this long term irrigation fund will also be increased to rupees 40,000 crores. Then this micro irrigation fund as well as long term irrigation fund are maintained by NABAD. So, this is wrong. So, 1, 2, 3 correct. So, these are important decisions taken during the budget. Then terahertz transmitter, this was developed by Japan and look at the following sentences. This terahertz transmitter, which was developed by Japan, it is capable of transmitting digital data over 
10 times faster than not 100 times, 10 times faster than 5G mobile networks. This terahertz transmitter will transmit data 10 times faster than 5G mobile networks very important. Then it achieved a communication speed of 105 gigabits per second using the frequency range from 290 gigahertz to 315 gigahertz. Second one is correct, first one is wrong. Then recently government launched a cyber swachita kendra. This is cyber swachita kendra was launched. What is the main purpose? The objective of cyber swachita kendra is to create a security cyber space of detecting botnet infections and for malware analysis, botnet and malware analysis to detect botnet infections and for malware analysis, this cyber swachita kendra was launched and it is operated by CERT in, CERT in stands for computer emergency response team India. So, both are correct and you should have clear idea about what is botnet what is the malware, what is the trojan, what is the DDoS attack, these four words I will explain you in detail in the coming classes, but you should have clear idea about DDoS attack, botnet infections, what is meant by trojan, what is the malware. So, here I have given certain things, please go through them and I will explain in the coming classes in detail. Botnet is the network of private computers infected with the malicious software. It is controlled as a group without the owner's knowledge and the infected computer is referred to as a zombie and this is used to steal data and send spam. Botnet is the combination of words robo and network and the attacks using botnets are called DDoS attacks, right. So, these things we will discuss once again. Which of the following is incorrect? Look, the lake is the largest freshwater lake in northeast India, absolutely correct. It is designated as wetland of international importance under Ramsar convention, this is wrong. So, it is already designated as a wetland of international importance under Ramsar convention. Kibul Lamjau National Park is situated on one of the Fumdis. Fumdis are heterogeneous mass of, please understand what is meant by Fumdis. Fumdis are heterogeneous mass of vegetation, soil and organic matter at various stages of decomposition, right. So, you can see this as an example, that means this is a heterogeneous mass of soil at the same time, this is under various stages of decomposition vegetation, soil and organic matter under various stages of decomposition and on one such Fumdis, Kibul Lamjau National Park is situated. So, <coughs> sorry, I have given the details here, please go through them. We have discussed previously also, this is one example of Fumdis and this is the location of Loktak Lake in Manipur and Sangai Deer, please do not forget. Kibul Lamjau National Park, this is Sangai Deer, these things do not forget. Then look at the following sentences pertaining to Kigali Pact. Yesterday I asked one question about Kigali Pact, today another question, but the matter is different, please understand carefully. It is amendment to Montreal Protocol, absolutely correct. It is adopted at the 28th meeting of parties to the Montreal Protocol, absolutely correct. Every year meeting of the parties is held after Montreal Protocol was accepted in 1980s. So, since 1980s, this every year meeting of parties is being held and during 28th meeting of parties in the year 2016, this amendment to Montreal Protocol was accepted and which is known as Kigali Pact. So, here this HFCs, previously chlorofluorocarbons, hydrofluoro hydrochlorofluorocarbons were there, previously chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, HCFCs were added as the substances to be controlled under the protocol and now as per Kigali Pact, HFCs are also added. 
right previously chlorofluorocarbons hydrochlorofluorocarbons were planned to be eliminated under montreal protocol and now to phase out hfcs are also added because hfcs are considered to be powerful greenhouse gases and with kigali pact the global temperature raise will be reduced to the extent of 0.5 degree centigrade by 2100 then one more thing the kigali pact will come into force from 1st january 2019 this is wrong please understand kigali pact will come into force from 1st january 2019 provided that it is ratified by at least 20 parties to the montreal protocol right so 1 2 3 correct it will come into force from 1st january 2019 recently government announced fair and remunerative price for the sugar cane sector and look at the following sentences the fair and remunerative price is it determined based on the recommendations of commission of agricultural costs and prices and after consultation with the state governments and other stakeholders absolutely correct and before arriving at fair and remunerative price government looks at various other aspects what are those aspects the aspects are cost of production second one is intercrop price parity at the same time overall demand supply situation at the same time domestic and international prices another important point is likely impact of this fair and remunerative price on general price level and resource use efficiency by considering all these factors frp will be decided so second one is wrong so one is correct and when you look at the sugar cane sector government for the past 2 3 years is supporting quite substantial way under cefasu what is this cefasu s e f a s u scheme for extending financial assistance to sugar undertakings right so here interest free loans are given by the banks as additional working capital to the sugar mills so this is the cefasu right then nasa plans to send first robotic spacecraft to the sun which is known as solar probe plus during 2018 itself solar probe plus look at the following sentences to withstand higher temperatures because when it is going to explore sun it has to take care of the higher temperatures and this is robotic spacecraft please don't forget and here to withstand higher temperatures when the spacecraft approaches the sun the components are made with carbon composite heat shield so the biggest challenge is to make the components with the carbon composite heat shield this can withstand very high temperatures then the corona which is an aura of plasma that surrounds the sun is much hotter than the visible surface then the sun occasionally emits high energy particles which pose a danger to unprotected astronauts and spacecrafts all three correct i will explain a little bit this will be the first mission of nasa to fly nearer to the sun and this carbon composite shield that is the thing which is to withstand high temperatures and please look into this slide two important points these points from examination perspective very important the surface of the sun which is known as photosphere is just 5500 degree centigrade whereas the atmosphere you can say corona loosely so the atmosphere is 2 million degree centigrade the surface is not that hot in comparison to the atmosphere and this is not understandable to the scientific community the reason is not understandable second one is why the sun occasionally emits high energy particles that are posing danger to unprotected astronauts and space crafts so these two things are going to be explored with this experiment of robotic space craft by nasa look at the next one drdo is establishing two layered ballistic missile defense 
please understand carefully two layered ballistic missile defense that is to shoot down enemy missiles if any enemy missiles are coming this ballistic missile defense system or bmd will shoot down those missiles right look at the following sentences exo atmospheric interceptor missile so there are two types one is the missiles at quite far range the missiles at 15 to 25 kilometers range like that exo atmospheric interceptor missile this can destroy the target outside the earth's atmosphere at a altitude of more than 85 kilometers so in a nutshell i would like to tell you exo atmospheric interceptor missile that shoots down the missiles up to an altitude of up to 85 kilometers second one is endo atmospheric range is just 15 to 25 kilometers so second one is wrong and let us go ahead so drdo successfully carried out a test of an interceptor missile and here two layered ballistic missile system almost under development this one is more than 85 kilometers second one is 15 to 25 kilometers so 15 to 25 kilometers is known as endo atmospheric range at the lower altitudes then this more than 85 kilometers range is exo atmospheric interceptor at high altitudes right remaining things i have given here the defense shield is made up of two interceptor missiles for the 85 kilometers range this is prudvi defense vehicle and advanced area defense missile for within the atmosphere for lower altitudes so these things please keep it in mind in examination from examination perspective and drdo expects to have the bmd shield ready by deployment by 2022 right next one is the kuruk language is in the news during the year kuruk language is in the news it is a spoken by oran tribal community and most important is it is of dravidian origin right first one is correct second one is wrong so here this kuruk language is spoken by oran tribal community and second sentence several tribal languages of eastern part have their origins in austro asiatic and tibeto burman families kuruk belongs to dravidian origin please understand here please go through it kuruk is endangered tribal language of the dravidian family and it was given official status in west bengal during 2016 17 it is spoken by oran tribal community why it is into the news is because of the reason it is the language which has got dravidian family or which is of dravidian family most of the tribal languages of eastern part or their origins in austro asiatic or tibeto burman families but the kuruk belongs to dravidian family only example of tribal language having its origin from dravidian family is the malto but it is spoken in rajmahal hills of jharkhand right then santali munda whole languages they belong to austro asiatic family whereas lepcha tamang and bhutia tribes the language is spoken by them belongs to tibeto burman group look at the following sentences by chance if any question is asked on these types of trains please keep in mind four types of trains one is antyodaya express second one is udai third one is tejas the fourth one is hum safar these four types of trains are into the news first one is antyodaya express is it is totally unreserved super fast long distance train first one is wrong antyodaya express is totally unreserved super fast long distance train with modern amenities udai udai is utkrist double decker air conditioned a3 this will be overnight train that is a double decker overnight train on the busiest routes to increase capacity by 40% tejas is the semi high speed train with high modern amenities normally meant for intercity travel and if you look at this uh, hum safar this is fully air conditioned third ac service 
So, these four things please do not forget Antyodaya, Udai, Tejas, Hamsafar. Shapur Kanti Dam is recently in the news, it is on Ravi river. This Himachal Pradesh will execute the project, it is also wrong, both are wrong, right. Here please look into this, it is on Ravi river and Punjab will execute the project. 20 percent of the power will go to Jammu and Kashmir. It is 11 kilometers downstream of Ranjit Sagar Dam. So, during the year, this is into the news, so, Shapur Kandi Dam, this is on Ravi River, Punjab will execute the project and 20 percent will go to Jammu and Kashmir. Next one, CGT MSE gives a third party guarantee for the loans of micro and small enterprises up to a maximum credit limit of 200 lakhs. Previously, it was 100 lakh, now it is increased to 200 lakh. This is one important point, CGT MSE gives third party guarantee or you can say similar to collateral security and most important, it gives third party guarantee for the loans of micro and small enterprises only, not medium enterprises. In one more point is, it gives fund based support as well as non fund based support. What is meant by non fund based? That means, non fund based are in the form of guarantee only, then because I am not taking loan, but I require some guarantee. Such type of things are known as non fund based support. So, CGT MSE gives fund based, non fund based it is also applicable for services sector, then guarantee coverage is extended to select NBFCs also. So, these things from examination perspective very, very important and the corpus of CGT MSE is also increased from rupees 2500 crore to rupees 7500 crore. So, five important aspects, it gives third party guarantee for the loans of micro and small enterprises up to rupees 200 lakh or 2 crores. Second point is applicable for fund based as well as non fund based as well as applicable for service sector industries and at the same time guarantee coverage is now extended to select NBFCs also. So, these things please do not forget. So, here it appears the first one is correct, second one is wrong, third one is correct. So, 1 and 3 correct, look at the next one, look at the following sentences, this is very important, Invest India, Invest India is the official investment promotion by the government of India. Invest India is the official investment promotion and the facilitation agency of government of India, but one important aspect is here the government's stake is just 49 percent. DIPP holds 49 percent and it is being diluted by including state governments nowadays. So, remaining 51 percent share is held by organization like FIKI and in one news item it is written that CII, FIKI, SOCHAM all hold 51 percent, but in one news item it was written only FIKI holds 51 percent, please leave that aside. 49 percent is by DIPP and now it is being diluted by including state governments. What is the purpose of this Invest India? It is the official investment promotion and facilitation agency of the government of India and it is promoted by DIPP, right. So, all three appears to be correct. Please look into this slide about Invest India, right. 49 percent share is held by government, I have already told you and it is a not for profit company and it is to facilitate investments into India from foreign countries. So, to act as first point of contact in our country for the potential investors from abroad, this Invest India was started and it is not for profit company promoted by DIPP, but DIPP holds 49 percent of the stake and that is also getting diluted to various state governments. So, the main purpose is to facilitate investments into India, handhold investors through the bureaucratic maze, right. So, this is all about Invest India, this is very important. Look at the following sentences with regard to EESL, EESL please understand it is a for profit commercial entity, this is wrong, EESL which is behind the 
energy efficiency lighting is for profit commercial company and its shareholders are four public sector PSUs, NDPC, PGCIL, PFC and REC. Second one is correct. Then please look into this, this EESL is the shareholding by NTPC, Power Grid Corporation of India, Power Finance Corporation, Rural Electrification Corporation, right. So, it is a for profit commercial entity, please understand, look at Solar Energy Corporation of India, Solar Energy Corporation of India is a now for profit commercial entity. Previously, it was not for profit company, but now it is changed to for profit commercial entity. Its mandate now extends to other forms of renewable energy. Initially, it was established with a view to look at only solar energy, but now it is extended to other forms of renewable energy and it is under the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. So, 2 and 3 correct. So, if someone talks about the Solar Energy Corporation of India, it is now for profit company for profit commercial entity and its mandate now extends to other forms of renewable energy also in addition to solar and it is under the ministry of new and renewable energy. Then the last one solar mamas, these are quite often in the news when our prime minister visited Africa, he met solar mamas. So, what is a solar mama? There is a solar mamas, they are rural women solar engineers. They are rural women solar engineers from the African countries. They are trained by this Barefoot College. Barefoot College is in Tilonia, Rajasthan and this Barefoot College is promoting and training these women in fabrication, installation, use, repair and maintenance of solar lanterns and households solar lighting and they are giving training in other aspects also and this is the program supported by government of India, please understand, right. So, all three correct. So, this is about solar mamas, please do not forget and when our prime minister visited Africa, he met the solar mamas there, right friends. We discussed 20 questions and some of which are very, very important. We will meet once again on Thursday morning 11 o'clock and 11.30. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thanks a lot.